Hello, people. Hi, everybody. Hi. I hope I'm live and you can see me. Can you see me, people? Come on, message me and let me know. Okay. So we begin with the session. So welcome to the seventh session of the Power Reading Series. And yes, people, we have come a little far now. So I hope that you've seen the previous videos. In case you haven't, kindly check them out. They're really informative. All right. This is all that we have done. We discussed the RC styles initially. And then we moved on. I gave you an explanation about it. And we did some practice questions. And in my second session, I discussed some important tones. Of course, along with some practice questions. And finally, I'm here with my third and the last session. Yes, let me tell you that this is my last session. Okay. Hi, Arav, Shilpi, Astha, Ashwini, Sweksha, Ishita. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session. And yes, let me break it to you. This happens to be the last session. And I am very much hopeful that you've benefited a lot from the series. You've learned a lot. You've got some vital insights into it. So being the final thing, all right, let me straight away get to the point. Now, those of you who believe that, oh my God, what is this? The slide is flooded with so many words. Let me reassert. Yes, tones are about words. It's very important. See, vocab is a very integral part of it. But at the same time, you also should know the technique of gauging the tone. That's why my sessions are replete with examples, all right, and with practice questions, that you understand the nuances and the right way of gauging it. So let's do some tones one by one, and then we will try out some practice questions. Okay, Charlie, let's start. Find some more important tones. Of course, any list is by no means exhaustive, but I tried my best to at least incorporate the important tones here. I'm not saying that this list is complete. It can't ever be. All right. So the first one is skeptical, dubious, suspicious, doubtful. Okay? Doubtful is the key word. Doubtful, jab aapko kisi cheez ke baare mein doubt ho raha hai, right? Distrustful and all these are simply synonyms. Uh, let me give you an example. Fine, let's talk about inoculation, talk about vaccination. Of course, of the COVID thing. Many people are quite pro-vaccine while some have their reservations, inhibitions, apprehensions about this. So they do have some qualms about getting vaccinated. So imagine that the author is writing and it's clearly reflected that he has his doubts. He doesn't want to be injected with chemicals, which is no idea about. He is definitely being skeptical. All right. Okay. Next is reverential, respectful. Differential, venerating. So respectful can be called the key word. And these are the synonyms. Of course, you can Google out or you can consult a nice thesaurus and you can come up with 10 to 15 synonyms. But I have actually compiled this list, rather curated this list, because I've seen these options as appearing quite frequently in such questions. That's why only these options and not just randomly any synonym. All right. So imagine that the author is writing about, uh, say, father of the nation, Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. And he is showing a lot of respect for him, that his contribution can never be undermined. All right. And he has, he treats him as his ideal and, of course, applauds his uh, policy of nonviolence. He's a lot, he has a lot of respect for him. So, of course, the tone is reverential or any of these. Clear here? Okay, now this is interesting. Conversational. Now I have clubbed up conversational with casual and informal. This doesn't mean they all are synonyms. Let me clarify this. When I say conversational, it means that either there's going to be a dialogue. This is like a dialogue which is taking place between two people, right? Or maybe many people. So that's an excerpt from a dialogue, maybe. Or sometimes it could also be that the author uses a conversational tone. So here it seems as if it's not something which is written. 
it doesn't look formal at all but in fact it feels as if the author is right in front of you and he's asking you a bevy of questions or as if he's doing a chit chat with you it seems as if he's having a conversation with you because of the language all right so this is going to be conversational now understand that conversational would of course be casual in nature would of course be informal because in a formal language you are very controlled while using the words your tone is very serious whereas here it's casual it's informal do you get it so I'm not saying that conversational is the same as casual but conversational is casual and informal in nature so that's how i've just written them together i thought i'll explain it to you anyway so i hope it is clear yes viksha it depends uh, you've asked a very intelligent question that you'll be writing a passage to teacher is it going to be a respectful tone it is supposed to be but these days you can't be ever sure of yeah all right so teachers also sometimes receive brick ads so you can't be sure but yes it is supposed to be reverential the way you want to address any of your teachers or any senior or any elders of your family the tone is reverential yes veksha meri abhi nahi hogi class this doesn't mean ki aage kabhi nahi hogi but as for now yes all right next tone is and now this is very simple your the author is really angry about something you know some beautiful words synonyms are indignant wrathful enraged now imagine that the author is talking about a very egregious crime or a very heinous crime and he is very angry about it say for example he is talking about some in famous cases like the nirbhaya case or something and he is very angry and he's fuming with anger and he says such people should be hanged i mean publicly hanged capital punishment should be given to them no mercy should be given to them whatsoever irrespective of their age he is angry he is wrathful he is full of rage okay i'm trying to give you an example so that it fits in really well let me know if you have still any queries yeah didactic something that i do every day day in and day out sermonizing moralistic pedagogy now please understand what is a didactic tone didactic is when the author intends to teach you something when he's trying to teach you something and often it's more moralistic in nature it can be purely instructional also but often it is moralistic in nature if you look at these words sermonizing where does this word come from it comes from the word sermons sermons or verses from a scripture sermons of the bible so to sermonize is to in a way religiously or morally guide someone so didactic is often of that nature pedagogy of course you already know it's about the teaching methodology so again all these words are when you try to teach someone for example the way your mother speaks to you i'm sure she is didactic most of the time or of course any of your teachers trying to teach you how to act like giving you instructions and trying to guide you got it so that's didactic and is commiserating the keyword could be sympathizing okay so if you have sympathy as the author is expressing sympathy or pity towards somebody in the passage the tone could be sympathizing commiserating compassionate concern no annapurna incendiary is very different i'll tell you yes arav i that's right annapurna i'll tell you what is incendiary that's coming up okay so commiserating is sympathizing for example if i'm talking about uh, all those war torn areas war torn areas like syria yemen the lives of the children and the women what plight are they living in i feel really bad for them my heart melts when i see that they have no food they have no shelter and they live in constant danger or any such war torn area around the world so of course it's going to be a lot of sympathy that will be evoked in my heart the, the tone is going to be sympathizing yes now here we are about incendiary 
Yes, Sara. We can also say empathetic. Very nice. It can also be called empathetic. Fine. Incendiary. Look at the word stimulating, stirring. Imagine that you're going to attend a political rally and you're listening to the lecture of your favorite leader. What's the tone like? What's the Chunabi Bhashan like? I say any leader. He's trying to incite you. So incendiary or exciting is when you're stirring up people towards some action. Many times it's negative. Sometimes it can also be positive. It's not that. Don't label it that it is supposed to be negative. It's provoking, provocative. Provocative often is used in the negative context, but stirring and stimulative are very neutral. Inciting is also very neutral when you're coding someone to take a particular action. Is this clear, class? Didactic sveksha means when you're trying to teach someone. Now it can be teaching in a regular way, the way a teacher teaches you. That could also be didactic. That could also be called academic. But if I am telling you about teaching some morals, then it's more going to be towards moralistic or sermonizing. Clear it? I hope it's better now. Yeah, Ishita, that's right. Fine. Now, coming to dogmatic, imagine that someone, see, all of us have dogmas or some inherent beliefs. But when we're trying to be very rigid about them, we tend to get a little pushy about it. We over-assert it. And when we talk about those rigid beliefs that are at the core of our value system, when we talk about them, we're not at all compromising in nature. We're not at all flexible. We're quite stubborn about them and we're pushy and we believe everybody should believe the way we believe. So that is where you're being very opinionated. Emphatic, you're emphasizing, you're stressing upon it. You're dogmatic, okay? Right. Admonishing. All right. What is to admonish? The words can be, the key words here can be caution or warn. Imagine that the author is writing a passage on climate change. And it says that, the passage says, that you have to be very, very careful about the way things are being done. There is a big disturbance in the ecological balance of the nature. And the nature is going to unleash its IO very soon. We are going to be in trouble. This is a forewarning. There's going to be a global catastrophe round the corner. Why don't humans sense it? So it's here. The passage here is outrightly cautioning us. The author through the passage is warning us of an impending peril or a danger. Admonish is sometimes also taken as to reprimand, to scold or to express your dis disapproval towards something. But here primarily and most commonly admonish is taken in the, in the way of warning or cautioning. Now threatening is slightly extreme or harsh in language. So we'll have to see if you feel that the degree is very intense, the kind of words that he is using is more of threatening and less of cautioning, then you can move towards threatening as a choice. Okay. Yes, Veksha, we can say that. Anupurna, which one are you asking about? I'm not very clear. Is it argumentative? Which one are you asking about? All right. Agreed, Araf. Wonderful synonyms you are coining. Good job. And I'm sure that you will enjoy the question section. I've included some really nice questions for you. Nostalgic, when you're walking down the memory lane, you are thinking about the good old days. Sometimes it can be slightly sad also, but it's most often when you are lost in the memory. Wistful is a synonym. When there's a longing about the past. Reminiscence. Evocative. Evocative is when your some emotions or memories are evoked. That's evocative. 
तो नोस्टैल्जिक इस पुरानी यादें ओके इफ आई टॉक अबाउट हाउ माय चाइल्डहुड वाज इट वाज सो प्लेन सो सिंपल लाइक टुडेस चिल्ड्रन वी डिड नॉट हैव मोबाइल गेम्स ऑफ कोर्स सो वी यूज्ड टू प्ले विद डॉल्स वी यूज्ड टू प्ले विद दोस toys of our simple toys and some they just out in the sun how we used to play around in the sun catching butterflies those good honest days when there were no tensions oh i am already getting nostalgic all right let me stick to the agenda and finally the last in the league apologetic when you have a feeling of remorse or a regret about something maybe you're guilty about something or maybe you just feel that are are as a queue hua You feel bad about why it happened. Shouldn't have happened. You're apologetic. You have regrets about something. You are remorseful. You're contrite or penitent. These are such wonderful synonyms. I would say, Shita, wistful is good enough. Reminiscence is also good. When you say something is reminiscent, it's reminding you of something. You're lost in reminiscence. Kushi, a very nice question. Kushi, I would sincerely suggest you to watch all my sessions of the Power Reading series. You will get if you just watch this series, you will get very valuable insights. At least you will be able to understand how to get started. All right. So we have spent a little too much time on tones because this was something that students are often quite confused about. That's why. But other than that, I believe. the first session the second session you know all the sessions in the beginning 1 2 4 they are about general rcs and how should we approach the rc so on and so forth so you must go through it the yeah, anapurna okay very nice question she asks me are dogmatic and argumentative the same very nice seems you followed all my classes okay dogmatic is supposed to be a little extreme a uh, a very fine or a very defining characteristic of argumentative is that it always relies on logical arguments the author is not very pushy here the author is actually trying to give you or the reader logical arguments supporting his stance are you ready that is argumentative dogmatic is a little more assertive more emphatic a little more pushy so you can bracket them as something which is similar but there's certainly a difference you can distinguish between them i hope i've answered pushy certainly of course you should yes weksha you are reminded of something you're living in the past yes that's nostalgic All right. So, with this wonderful set of tones, let's try out our first question of the day. Time flies when I'm with you guys. I just didn't realize that's already twenty minutes. So, let's practice this wonderful question. Hit it. You have to read it really fast. Make sure that you attempt it fairly fast. Done, are we? All right, all right. Let's discuss. <coughs> What do you think should be the answer? Okay, I don't think I need to explain this. I'm not going to do a word-for-word -word translation for you. I believe my audience is smart enough; they have a decent level of comprehension. It's talking about amateurs in athletics, and it says that they have very limited days to perform. College athletes are amateurs only in name. and in the ill defined mandates of obsolete policies i always tell you look at the language 
look at the words look at the adjectives and adverbs this suggests so much about what the author has inside now it says that these people they generate so much of revenue telling me the ways through which they generate the revenue yet most of the money goes to the individual universities and these athletes themselves don't get much of it and then they're also barred from participating in other such games or they are not allowed to avail other opportunities to earn money as their peer scam clearly it is time for american colleges to reevaluate this inequity now look at these words look at inequity inequity what is equity don't tell me equity shares equity is justice yes aman this is the last session arav okay i've got the answer from arav very well done that's the right answer inequity is injustice so look at the word inequity look at ill defined mandates of obsolete policies obsolete is outdated ill defined mandates mandates is when something is compulsory or wo ill defined it's not properly defined it's not properly put up doesn't this suggest that the author feels that these policies are unfair towards the amateurs right the athletes here who are playing for the universities now let's have a look at this some choices could be a little clear some could be close unbridled admonition admonition i just told you didn't i discuss it's about warning or reproaching and when you couple it with the word unbridled it becomes even more extreme bridle kya hota hai bade ki lagam a kind of a restraint but when it is unbridled there is it's limitless it's unending so unbridled admonition is too extreme in nature and here there's no admonition which is taking place anyway so cancel it off critical yes certainly you can call it critical because the author feels that you know this policy is not just they are depriving these amateur sports persons and the policies are too outdated and it's not fair so it can be certainly called critical lucubrious is sad i taught you in my last class these words that i discussed with you are going to reappear in the auctions so anybody who has intently seen my previous videos will understand this really well and class if you have not seen my previous videos 5 6 and 7 this session will not be able to make much sense to you because you don't know possibly what are tones i am not recapitulated that as well because i assume that you've been watching all of them so please do watch wrathful is full of anger do you think that the author is very angry no ishita it is not he's not enraged yes fine so do you get it he's not that angry now here i know this was close Of course, we have to make challenging questions, but that is when you realize that when are you going to call it angry? Wrathful is a lot of anger. I think it will be too extreme. The author should express something. You know, I feel like shutting these universities. I feel like putting them on arson. I am not in favor of this thing, and I would go to any length to teach them a lesson. When he's being really angry. that's going to be a different language altogether all right here it's simply critical fine so the answer is going to be b beta which is critical very well done all of you for the right answer done with it any confusion oh somebody thinks it c do you know the meaning of c C is lugubrious, beta. Lugubrious means very sad. The author is not sad. Mournful. जब आप किसी चीज का मातम बना रहे हो बड़ा दुख बना रहे हो. No, he's not expressing his sadness here. He's criticizing the way universities are treating these athletes. So it's critical. Let's take up something trickier. 
Are we ready? Come on, class. Let's speed up. Let's speed up. Yes, Viksha, I agree. The second line was simply telling you that these policies, which are trying to limit the participation of these athletes, they're quite obsolete or outdated. The mandates, mandates, kya hote, orders, hote. they are also ill defined. Okay? Do this one, the second one. Quick. All the options here in the answer choices, all the words, we have discussed them. So you should be able to recall. Okay, time to discuss. Right. Let's discuss. So what is this talking about? A very interesting thing. It's about food critics. So initially, the author is telling you how food critics do their job. They have quite in-depth knowledge of this, right? They are aware of the visual, tactile, tactile is touch related, and even auditory elements, and yet able to experience the smell and taste of food independently of those senses. Some people think that this is a regular thing, but there is acumen involved here. Acumen is a good understanding of something, wisdom of something. So to assess the quality of food, food critics have a lot of experience. They use multiple senses to finally assess the quality of food. And there's a lot of acumen which is involved in this. And this is an art, the author feels. However, now the author says more and more people are creating their own blogs and they can give their own advice. So it's becoming very common these days. While some might see this development as more egalitarian, egalitarian is more about equality. Some people might feel that, yes, it's cool. Everybody should get the opportunity to give their advice. So this is more egalitarian to give their feedback. We also do that on Zomato and Swiggy and so on and so forth, right? But others see it as tainting what was before a highly selective field of food critics and writers. Others think that this thing is a little tainting, not a positive thing. The author, however, has maintained his neutrality, I would say. Because he says some people call this development positive while others call it negative. Are you getting this? So out of the given options, which one looks like the most reasonable one to you? Very nice. Arav and Sweksha have given me the right answer. Some of you are a little muddled up apparently. Okay. Yes. Very nice. More good answers, correct answers pouring in. That's encouraging class. So in the first place, we need to understand what is skeptical. I just discussed this a while ago. Skeptical is when you have doubts about something. Here the author does not seem to have any doubts about anything. He's quite sorted. He's quite clear about it. Right? So skeptical is out of question. Sanguine is when the author is cheerful or optimistic about something. We discussed this in our previous class where I told you about a, pers uh, a pessimistic and an optimistic passage. And optimistic is sanguine, cheerful, positive. I don't think it is sanguine or cheerful. Rather, I would say the author is quite uh, musing about something. 
isn't he trying to figure out what our food critics like what's that that's an art and what's the situation now so of course he's thinking in depth about a topic and contemplative is what precisely means the same what is penitent i just told you having regrets about something the author doesn't seem to have any regrets why would he have any regrets about it so penitent is completely ruled out sanguine is ruled out we are only left with contemplative and what this contemplative suggest that the author is deeply thinking about something all right so we are done with this so can we call it a day there was one more question but that's a little too challenging so anyway i believe we can get back to solving more and more questions in my regular classes all you lpgians fine so let's call it a day and i'll give you more practice in my regular classes uh, students all of you i hope that you benefited from this and with this the power reading series comes to an end and i hope you are going to be a better reader and better in terms of solving passages you'll be getting higher accuracy just need to follow all that i have discussed with you and that's all for today thank you so much stay good stay positive and keep learning